Time we are dealing with State Park or Heavy Metal Summer, whichever you prefer. I am your host, Eat Dan Stanadu, and I am joined by my pals, my partners in crime, and I got Nick, Nick Boxer. Greetings and salutations. I'm glad I could make this one because, yeah, I've seen it before. Because, <laughs> t- yeah, we're, we're driving down to the We Walk a Wilderness Challenge. So I know I know Jim will, will be totally excited about the challenge. I, I, it's the uh, it's the orienteering. The, yes. the, ori- the, the oriental hearing. Sorry. <laughs> the oriental hearing. <laughs> that uh, I'm going to have the most trouble with. <laughs> and Jack, Jack, which, which event are you good for? Why don't you ever do these in the same order? Why do I never know <laughs> which one of us you're going to call on first? And that's part of the fun. the hell out of me. Uh, all right. Hi. Uh, Let's talk this movie. <laughs> Were right. you surprised by the uh, the order, or that he called on on you at all? Like, <laughs> a little of a little. You of knew a, it yeah. was coming at some point. Yeah, yeah it's but not you know, like I never. Sometimes we throw to you with the end of the episode. <laughs> 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 just, just, oh, I love that. You guys go through the whole thing. <laughs> there the edge, you just go, Jack, box? By the way, Jack was here. Just just in case you missed it, Jack no, was that's here. Brad. Brad's the one who, Brad, Mr. Brad Doc is uh, the one who's not here. That's right. <laughs> what guy? All right, Nick. Nick, explain the six movies that form um, State Park. <laughs> in any order you like. Yes. <laughs> um... Well, the state park uh, that we're we're visiting, uh, I think it's called We Wonka something or other, um, is in trouble. The state has sold it off to a big developer for some sort of pesticide company, I think. And it's up to the kids who seemingly inhabit this park to save it. Uh, meanwhile, we have... Uh, Lots of excuses to show bare breasts, a couple hair dressing scenes, and kids just generally having fun. Uh, this one's not plot heavy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's multiple plots heavy. Well, it has three different titles. It's called State Park, Heavy Metal Summer, and How to Fill 90 Minutes with Nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, no, if you've seen Loose Screws or Up the Creek or anything like this, it's not going to surprise you. The, this one has the added twist of a wilderness competition for the fu- finale, <laughs> which is something I didn't know existed. And since when do state parks give a $5,000 scholarship um, for contests like this? That the, the prize seemed rather high to me. Well, in fairness, you just said you didn't know they did these contests, so you don't have a range of what the prize should be. True. <laughs> 5000 of all the things in this movie, $5,000, only $5,000 is the most plausible thing in the entire movie. It's not it's like they all... said 50000 That I couldn't have bought. <laughs> that in the state, for a state park, they weren't really all that interested in conserving anything. It seemed like a public cram- cam- campground. <laughs> yeah, I'm what? not. I'm not it sure the... it was a state park for, for for all the. It does. It does really 
seem more private campgroundy. Well, the uh, beside the so here's what I kind of gathered. Beside the campground was was like owned land by the Honeycut uh, family, which was Trucky and his brother, and that's kind of the way I felt. Like like even though Trucky where, where owned, are they, are they the dumb ones with the boat. No, no, Trucky was Trucky was the bear. And his brother was the one who was yearning after the hairdresser girl. No, no, no. Who who was the who were the honeycuts? Well, Chucky and his brother are the honeycuts. Uh, oh, oh! <laughs> they, they own the land. No, they. I think they own the land They're... next to it, and they own the. Yes. Uh, and on on the campground, they run the uh, the um, you know corner store the. Okay, so they okay, so they own land, and they have the see that was that was a major plot point I missed in there. They're they're uh, they're, they're leasing where the the actual little yeah. no, see I, so I, I were, yeah were without that leasing. how could I didn't know they owned any land <laughs> With, without that how yeah that, without that how could you follow the plot at all. <laughs> I, which which plot? <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> okay, so so let's one of the like let's try to break down all the different plots because I think there's there's <laughs> like there's so many of them. So the way I see it, so I mean you have the heavy metal summer plot, which is the the bassist and the drummer going to L.A. to find more band members so that they can be an awesome heavy metal band. Like Ted Nugent. Well, yeah, yeah, and me ten Dujin. and then so then that's one of their plots. Then you have the three girls who are there. No, no, no they they have their own separate plots there. Well, oh, Cause... you between the <laughs> between the two, you want to break it out too? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, between the two. No, no, no. You got the drummer who has to defeat his fear of old people. <laughs> The lead singer, I guess he's guitarist, bassist. who has to defeat his, bassist, who has to defeat his girl of fear of preppy girls that want to throw themselves at him. Oh, it's, it's hard being him. Um, yeah. what I what I want to know. Okay, so th- that word we're calling the heavy metal summer one. So now you got the three girls. Are we calling this the state park uh, plot then? <laughs> Part, well, like, it's part of the state park because <laughs> because the one girl that really wants to win the Orient or the, that really wants to win the challenge, she's the only one that really veers into that. The other the other ones kind of follow their own path a little bit, and like and that's the more straight like uh, class of nineteen eighty four movie where where you're where it's like the girls are out on spring break and want to see about like having sex with as many guys as possible before you wind up getting married to uh, to Mister Preppy Pants at the end um, and do <laughs> yeah, some was hairdressing. Was the state park their final destination? I believe it was. Yeah, it was in their case. Okay, I I thought the one girl was going to compete in this thing, and then they were moving on. Uh, well, I suppose that's possible. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's so I, living, we're, we're clear they're not living here permanently. No, none of them are. Yeah, besides yeah, yeah. The, besides and, the two, and 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 the one guys. girl, by the way, I don't think was trying to have sex with everybody. I think she was just giving topless haircuts, as most people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's right. And to- sorry. You, you keep this in mind. Topless haircut. She gave the same haircut to everybody. So and only only. Tr- by by the way, we should mention now the people the, the people running the store. One is named Trucky. The other is named Taylor. Trailer. His younger brother is Trailer. <laughs> uh, Trailer's the only one who didn't get a topless haircut. Yeah, poor kid. <laughs> and he wanted one. He was desperate oh, did for, he a, ever for a topless, hair, yeah. topless haircut. And then, I thought the movie was going there for a while, and that would have been uncomfortable. <laughs> I can think back on some of these movies at that era where I went, oh, yeah, those kids were like 12 when they're standing, <laughs> <laughs> naked woman standing in front of them. I'm like, they're lucky, I guess. But it's, it's nice. but yeah, and so then you have the you have the, the We Wonka race, which the Wilderness Challenge, which is which is totally like up the creek in that regard. And so you have the girl that's looking for that. She needs but, the money. But the, But their concept was, let's do up the creek, but shittier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> with with the high cost of uh, whitewater rafting. Yeah. Yeah. Like they just run Let's through the same a, set of 
<laughs> orientation challenge instead. That was weird. Like, but whereas the up the creek that that segment is like fifteen minutes of the movie at the end. This is like a minute fifty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but but the build up to it is enormous. Yeah. And so and here's one of the things that I didn't get. Okay, so so she needs the five thousand dollar scholarship so that which is which is explained scholarship so that she can um go to school because her parents have, have declared bankruptcy. So meanwhile our heavy metal bassist guy uh, or uh, the heavy metal guys they hatch the plan that they're going to get the five thousand dollar scholarship so that they can buy martial arts. <laughs> Yeah. This heavy metal band with with a bassist and a drummer and a drummer, no yes. good. Song. <laughs> well, they're they're going to L.A. to build to, to a, build a mega their, band to, yeah. to make a super build a super band yeah. 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 with the yeah. nooch. Yeah, and with then the new, yeah, they, yeah, and then just you, a suggestion the nooch. Yeah, and then you have Trucky, who is the bear who is trying to save the the place from from the evil. I think uh, you skipped land over developer. the bear too easily. <laughs> I think the well, oh no! I mean, the the bear is a the bear is like a definite like, you know. I'm just I'm just trying to trying to get the lay of the land before we go <laughs> into the. the, the bear. So, I think so I think this only makes a whole story. lot more sense if you just leave the bear out. <laughs> <laughs> we we can bring him in later, but that, that is the, really, that is if the, you're explaining this movie, just leave him out. That is that is all the plots in the movie. And then what we do is we none of them resolve or move forward. <laughs> By the time you've established all those plots, ninety minutes is up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, um, you have the you have like the evil land developer guy. It's it's found out that that of course he he's dumping company. toxic waste, so he gets oh, yeah. to come up and 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 all the and all the girls meet their guy their proper guys and uh, you know and but otherwise everything else is the same. Well, and, the, and the girl that has to leave school gets the five thousand dollars in the end. In the she, end, uh, even though she end. oddly enough doesn't actually win the uh, win no, the thing. The the winner that yeah, but well that's but but it's because the other girl who does win it describes the three of them. But we're the three musketeers. Yes. So my so, yeah. my so my favorite part of the ending there of that ending is uh, so one of the other three wins. So the girl who needs who her parents uh, her dad went bankrupt she can't afford to go to their school anymore um the other kids they're rich kids so uh one of those two other two girls wins she has the five thousand dollar check and she hands it to the girl whose family has gone bankrupt and said now you can stay in school and she's like that's amazing i can't believe you're doing this and then the girl who won says it's okay you can owe me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can pay it back yeah, yeah. Like, wow, that's that's quite a gift you just gave her. <laughs> <laughs> it's very very kind of you. <laughs> it's good, good, good people. Well, the <laughs> fact that the fact that she even managed to win after like half-assing the entire competition. <laughs> I I love when when they do that in a competition where the person that you know gets easily distracted and just sort of um that um I'm just doing this. And plots long wins. I enjoy that. I, I like those. Total tortoise and a hare. Yeah. Something, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, she only got through the orientation because she spotted a pretty flower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, there's so many, there's so many characters in this movie. And just, it, it pays no real attention to where it wants to go or what, why it needs to go there for the most part. <laughs> So for the for the toxic dumping storyline, uh, Trucky <laughs> Trucky, who's one of, who's our hero and the worst actor I've seen in this, <laughs> just, like ever in this ser- in this whole podcast, um, he's just so awful. Um, he uh, he sneaks in. He he takes some pictures of them uh, dumping big barrels of uh, toxic waste into the ground. Um, and then later complains he has no evidence, by the way. I would just like to say. <laughs> well, see, I don't know if he makes it away with the camera, but he takes pictures anyway. And, well, because uh, he gets attacked at that point. Yeah, he gets attacked. And and then they, they're they just going to throw him into the pit and bury him. And I, I'm really like, for how sweet these movies kind of are, it's surprising amount of them end with a an attempted murder. <laughs> <laughs> 
that just seems to be a, like by the end, like you you must ramp it up um like really high. So let's just you know try try to kill him. Try to get like he's been an inconvenience to us this whole time. Let's let's murder him. <laughs> well, that I mean, <laughs> this one had one of the weird or one of the you know probably most different villains because often these kind of movies will have the 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 prudish girl or whatever or or like mm. the evil uh, principal or the jo- headmaster the jocks, the yeah, jocks that kind of thing this is the evil land <laughs> thing so it's so that's where it's kind of a like where it's more of a camping movie in in this case as opposed to as opposed to a school but it feels like a spring break movie at the same time so <laughs> there's that is it, that is the same villain from break in two though yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's just saying. That's true. And probably that same villain may come up 400 times more in this podcast. If, if we get more camping um, ones, then yeah, yeah, I think that is your I'm surprised how camp, few yeah. toxic dumps, uh, waste, uh, toxic waste dump things are have uh, showed up so far, actually, on the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, let's get to scoring. No, <laughs> all right, we've only got like 10 minutes. I just don't I'm, know okay. There. I'm okay. I'm okay to get this going. It, it honestly could because because like the thing is, there's so many different different things going on that it's almost impossible to actually break down each of them individually, unless you want to talk about the bear. That's really the only thing that I can that I can well, see talking about. Well, let's let's get the bear. Scoring. Let's someone someone unpack the bear and then uh, and then we'll do scoring. I'll Jack, that. unpack the bear. Bear the first time. I think you need to unpack the bear. <sighs> Okay, so so well, I mean, so the bear, who is called um, Wee Wonka Willie, is of course Trucky in the bear costume, and so he is doing his best, level best, to sabotage everything that um, the land owner does. So so he's going out there and do and doing like various um, ego terrorist things, and. Um, you make that sound so innocent. No, oh, yeah, I mean, but <laughs> it is—it is, it is kind of a quaintly eco-terrorist in this. Uh, yeah, all the people in this movie are so innocent, considering like your heavy metalers are the most innocent heavy metalers of all time. Other, they're they're scared by old people, but other than that, they're they just. <laughs> It's just so nice and sweet, and 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 nobody ever curses. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's very it's very true, and. But yeah, so so I mean, the bear shows up on occasion. It's supposed to be a secret, but um, the one girl figures it out pretty quickly that uh, he's the bear, and by looking at his ass. By yeah. yeah, so so he's pulling off the costume. Um, he's bending over. You see a shot of his ass, and she's like, "Ooh, nice ass!" And then, and then, he, so this is the weirdest thing. He's pulling off his jeans at one point to go swimming, and he pulls off his jeans to to reveal jean shorts I, that was one of my <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah and and then she looks at it and she's like i re- i know that ass and, and then of course that's when she figures out that he is uh we want a willy otherwise the she and she bremen or she remen, or she figures thinks to herself for all of three seconds that whether or not she should reveal to him that she knows <laughs> Before it's just say blurting it out, I'm like, <laughs> yes. Um, and then of course she becomes the bear at the end to save him. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, like the bear, the bear's an well, odd. Because if she's the bear, it couldn't possibly have been him the whole time. Otherwise, that, that's right. That's the only right. one person could have ever worn this suit. Yeah, because who who else knows about this? Who, no, you. It would only be one person that would ever know about the bear. <laughs> I have to say, I was disappointed by that explanation of the bear. The way Jack, <laughs> the the way Jack threw to it, I thought "unpack the bear" meant something completely <laughs> different. That does sound like a euphemism, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I gotta go home and unpack the bear. <laughs> well, that's what I'm gonna be doing right after the podcast. Man. I, gotta, I gotta play with you. Gotta play with your wee wonka Willie. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Emphasis of wee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I got I got nothing else with the bear. All right, let's get the scoring. All right, in our search for the ultimate B movie, we rate every film in five categories, none of which are objective quality. The first category is called schlock appeal, and we start with Stan. Well, there, there's there's schlock in this, 
um, but I don't actually consider it particularly good schlock. It's it's schlock that's been done better in a lot of uh, in a lot of other movies that we've watched. And I think for me, one of the one of the things, and I got to say, I was actually disappointed watching this movie. So I had I had super high hopes. As Jack mentioned, I was really excited to uh, to find this movie existed. I was really excited that we got to watch it, and then I watched it, and I'm like, fuck, I just Oh, that <laughs> totally didn't get that. It was not, you know, like all the storylines just really generally didn't work for me. So I'm a, I'm only going to give it a four. I'm pissed. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to go slightly higher, but only slightly. I'm going to give it a five. I mean, you might as well call this movie a Canadian tax credit, the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> They're all the same, the, the, these Canadian tax credit movies. So, it be yeah, five. Shouldn't it be a provincial uh, park? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all, they're all also, uh, even though they're Canadian movies, they're all also taking place in the U.S., supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, schlock appeal. It is, it is, despite the fact that 90 minutes and nothing happens, it is mildly entertaining. <laughs> mildly entertaining, but absolutely. I, I, it's like, the thing about it is, it doesn't have this, it doesn't, it doesn't embrace it. It doesn't go for it. Like, it's really as it, like one of these teen sex comedies. This is the one you would have watched with your girlfriend. Yeah. You know, Cause it's, like, it's really pretty innocent and mild and, and just... Yeah, so and, and that's the thing is it just doesn't go for it enough. So a five is what I got it. I, I unfortunately am very much like Stan. I was I, I watched the first two minutes of this, and the guy in the bear costume he's scaling a fence. He starts talking to the camera. I'm like, this is insane. We yeah. got to do this. And then that never happens again <laughs> for the rest of the movie. And and except for a couple of uh, of removable scenes with boobs, uh, this movie could play on Nickelodeon. Like, oh, yeah. it's, it's incredibly wholesome. <laughs> like surprisingly so. Uh so only three for me. Uh more heart than budget. Um tax credit movie. That you know, Nick, you <laughs> said it best. I mean, it seems like like this is the kind of thing where you're churning it out and and you just decided to churn it out with a whole bunch of different kind of uh plots thrown in where it was just like, you know. I haven't done this kind of thing before. I haven't done this kind of thing before. Let's just toss them all into the blender and uh, and see what we get. Um, yeah, the acting's largely not good, and the story makes little to no sense, so it doesn't feel like it doesn't... And like you say, you know, like Jack said, they didn't go for it. So I didn't feel the, the love or feel anything like that, so I'm going to go with a three. Um, You said they hadn't done... I'd say they'd had had done this kind of thing before. I mean, well, well, I feel recycled. Oh yeah, yeah. But I feel like like maybe maybe um, you know Raffle Zelinsky hadn't done Up the Creek, so he felt like tossing in an Up the Creek moment kind of thing. That that's really how I felt about it. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah, I have to say a three as well. This is wholly unoriginal, and nobody really cared. Well, I mean, I can't say they didn't care. They just weren't talented enough to show they cared. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the fact that that it's trying to have an environmental message, it is so wholesome. The actors, I think, really, really are trying. Like, there's a there's a, every time like the like the the guy plays trailer talks about the toxic waste. He gets super intense. And Kim Myers, I think, is really, really sincere in wanting to make this character and and, and be a sweet character. And like, I think the acting is 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 quite. Uh, they put in as much. They didn't have the talent, but they put in the effort to be as, to to and and they were trying their best for what ability they had. So I will give it a five. <laughs> my I think my my favorite heart line in the movie is uh, we should we should help each other whenever we can. It's the spirit of the eighties. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that's, right. that's definitely historically how we think of the eighties. Yeah, yeah, the eighties the eighties were the the eighties were do stuff for other people generation. <laughs> <Decades. Okay. laughs> How can I help? That was the, that was basically the anthem. Uh, four for me, all the same stuff. Uh, what the fuck moments? Um, I mean the fact that they put it together is pretty what the fuck. But um, but yeah, like uh, topless haircutting, 
that that was that was really out of nowhere. Um, also, the fact that like when when the the one black um, uh, like uh, park park guy warden not he wasn't the warden but one of the one of the park rangers, park rangers, park rangers. yeah pulls yeah. pulls off his hat it's like oh you're here for her and he's got the same haircut uh you know it's just like and then you you kind of cut through every every guy having the same haircut and it's it's a little weird um the, the, ted nugent showing up like and and the and the old people that the one heavy metal guy is afraid of um turns out they're ted nugent's um, grandma and grandpa or something like that and uh uncle uncle, uncle yeah. and uncle and uncle yeah. yeah and so so he's like well, you guys are loud so i thought i'd show up and then ted nugent's playing along to the song but he's playing something completely different than the song <laughs> is which which is fantastic um so you know th- there's there's these moments throughout that i think are kind of that i think are what the fuck um but yeah again i, d- I just felt like like it was just it was just kind of a tossed in a blender that was a whole bunch of the standard tropes of these kind of movies tossed in a blender and put out so i i can't go ridiculously high i'm only going to go with five um yeah i there's some weird stuff in this movie but i can't say anything that stands out or i mean even the bear which when we first see him that's a wtf mhm but they sort of explain that. And within the context of the movie, it makes enough sense. It's as good as anything else in this movie. I, I can't go any higher than a four. <laughs> anytime, anytime you're doing the, the scoring for a movie and one of the lines is, it's as good as anything else in this movie. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> So the thing about the the thing about the bear, yeah, like, the thing about the bear is at, at the very beginning I'm watching I'm like oh oh because I thought it was a real bear the way it was being set up was, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that it was obviously a bear a guy in a bear costume but that it, he was supposed to be portraying a real bear well, I actually <laughs> thought it was supposed to be a real bear that had like like I thought it was you know I like mean, a yogi bear kind of character yeah 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 that's what I yeah. thought too yeah yeah. Yep. yeah I thought it was like. So as soon as I saw it, it was just a guy in a costume, and then he just walks – he just keeps the costume on for way longer than he should. <laughs> uh, after he gets home and stuff, hey, let's just sit down in the costume. We don't take this off because, uh, you know, it's summer and it's, it's, it's uh, cold out. So uh, – the, but the, the WTF start and stop with Ted Nugent showing up, okay? Because <laughs> the concept is these people, these people are playing. It's Rochelle Sweet who's singing on stage, by the way. Uh, Rochelle Sweet, who went on to probably be the most successful person, including Ted Nugent, easily from this thing. And she had to buy Madonna's house for $5 million. She's the executive producer of Two Broke Girls and stuff like that. Um, so it's hugely successful. And she's on stage singing. She started her career as a, as a musician. That didn't go anywhere, but she ended up doing okay for herself. And, and they're playing these songs. And, and Ted Nugent basically just says, hey, I was over in the woods over there, and I heard your music. I thought I'd show up to play. <laughs> And because apparently he just walks around at, at night in the woods by himself, hoping to hear music with his guitar. In case there's a going on somewhere that he can just walk on stage for. And then they sing a song called uh, My, my, my uh, uh, Chainsaw Love or something like that. that and, and that's the other thing about this movie is this is clearly put together by people who are older, who want to connect to younger people think this is what younger people are like or like or are like <laughs> but in no way shape or form have any concept of what young people are like <laughs> or do like and and so when you've gone out of your way to put together a soundtrack of 12 songs it's between the 12 songs this terrible i mean every <laughs> single song <laughs> What's the other? I, I I like the Fierce Bueller song ripoff they opened with <laughs> at the beginning. Oh, it even had the bar. ow ow. Oh yeah, yeah. When they were ripping off Yellow, yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, the, you're gonna have to put that song on this podcast. I'm afraid because you have to hear this song. It is literally the song is called I think State Park. At least it has the word State yeah. Park in it, but yeah, it's yellow. And it's just, it's, 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 uh, oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, it's <laughs> awful, yeah. This are terrible. What are the plot points? Let's, let's, let's hit this. 
is they go out of their way to have a scene where this preppy rich girl goes out of her way to talk about how much she hates heavy metalers because they're <laughs> disgusting. Then falls for one, not knowing he's heavy metal because he's swimming, so his hair is wet, so she can't tell that it's a heavy metal guy. And then when the first time he shows up dressed in, uh, with a, in, in, in the way no heavy metal person dressed up, <laughs> with a mohawk and white face paint on, she's like, well, he's disgusting. Look at him. I didn't know he was a heavy metaler. Meanwhile, she had talked about how much she was in love with him. So she now goes and dresses up with him, dresses up and decides to change her whole style to dress like him. After, after he has a conversation with her talking about how she shouldn't be a walking billboard, I'd like to point out they spent maybe 10 minutes together when she fell this head over heels in love with him. Uh, like, Dude, obviously you didn't see Grease too, because that's the movie. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, obviously you haven't seen it half the movies that we've watched because they people fall in love in these movies in a split second. That's all it I, takes. I actually wrote that down, Nick, Nick that, 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 end, that the end of that arc is the ending of Grease. Like, yeah. That is exactly the way Grease ends. The important uh, lesson she learns is be exactly what the guy wants you to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and... and... Like, there's lots of little things like that in this movie. So uh, I, it's not the most WTF, but when you break it down, it's it's got tons of moments. So I'll give it a six. Six. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I I think as I think you made compelling arguments there. I, I I'm, I'm going to up it a little bit from what I was expect eh, from what I was uh, thinking before. I I I really like the song "Love Is Like a Chainsaw." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Also, but but that song that goes boom boom, State Park yeah. is <laughs> a terrible terrible song, uh, and that's that's how they open this bad boy. Uh, yeah, strangely, the because I the, because of the other films from this director, and that I was going in thinking sex comedy, uh, that it takes more than half an hour just to have the first topless scene uh, seems kind of what the fuck to me. <laughs> like, oh, what? It lasts. No time at all. <laughs> they, and they're all fairly. Re- I think they're all removable. Like there's three scenes, and they're that you there, could lift them out. There is that other. There is that other moment where there's another girl who, for some reason, steps into a booby trap where she gets yeah. caught up in the in the net, and apparently being caught up in a net and being cut down from it uh, at at the proper velocity will ca- cause your top to come off. <laughs> some so yeah, learn, I did learn something in this episode. Yeah, you did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then those girls are there at the end, and I'm like, really? Did we really ever establish who they are or whatever? <laughs> no. they're, they're tied up screaming. Oh no, man. I, I think I think it's intentional because then you could just pop them right out of the the movie and release it as a G-rated film. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> they don't connect to anything else. I uh, only a four for me on this. And we did forget that, like, one of the the weirder characters was the. Dick and Jane Doe characters yeah, that yeah. were like the Russian, um, you know, like are, that were they're... put in by plants by the by the land developer, which made really no sense, and they're barely in it. <laughs> it was just... yeah, like yeah. I could tell whether they're supposed to be spoilers for the race. They're trying to win the race. Yeah, they're supposed to be they're ring- ringers, ringers, but the ringers, they're ringers. Yeah. But but why do they need to win? Like. What what <laughs> yeah, what's, what's they, the reason all, that anybody uh, needs to win anything in this? Uh, the developer also wants the scholarship, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like I don't know what I don't know what the end game is for winning that race. I'm yeah. gonna pay you ten thousand dollars so that you win the five thousand dollar race. <laughs> <laughs> was it ten thousand? I thought they were getting a thousand each. Uh, oh yeah, they were. But like, but it felt like it felt uh, he like nets like... three thousand dollars off that scholarship. Then that's a good deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but he can go to school. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. All right, Stan. Memorable moments. Uh, what I'm gonna remember the most about this movie is how epically disappointed <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this hope for heavy metal and tits, and I got denied on so many levels. And so, um, there's, there's like, yeah, sure. I mean, the bear, like, there's, there's little things, but 
but it, it's not it's not good. So I don't think I'm going to, like, Ted Nugent showing up. Yeah, I mean, like, the soundtrack has some highs and some lows and stuff like that. But, yeah. Some lows, yeah. A lot of lows. But, but yeah, it's it's really a three. Um, I'm going to give it a two because I know I'm going to get tricked into watching this thing again. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to see a movie called this, Heavy Metal Summer and yeah. you're going to be like, sweet. This, this, what, a, this multiple is titles. Oh, uh, yeah generic plot that's so similar to other movies I, excuse me i love um yeah some i wouldn't be surprised if we accidentally throw it in like three seasons from now yeah i can see that happening <laughs> yeah and, and imagine how pissed i'll be <laughs> I, I, I bet it will score even better um, <laughs> yeah did you give your did you give your score there nick I did. I believe it was a two or a three. I think, two. Two, I think two. Two is what two, you said. Yeah. You can make it anything. Two, like I, 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 I'm like, I'm good on a two. All right. Yeah, it's uh, man, the Nugent showing up is memorable. Like honestly, Ted Nugent showing up. Anytime you see Ted Nugent in that, when he's that young, and his hair is that big, and he's that <laughs> tall and skinny, and and you, you just go, wow, Ted Nugent. He he was a star. Like. I will remember him. I'll remember basically his mullet. To me, that's the memorable movie of the, the moment of the movie. But that's really where it ends. But that it is very memorable to me personally. So I will give it a four. Right. I think the weird part of the Ted Nugent thing is like about twenty minutes in, they said, "I want to like jam with someone like Ted Nugent." I'm yes. Like, that was yeah. really specific. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, like, he just like walks around in the woods. Yeah. Well, Luckily, that, that actually he, makes he, sense. He barely tours and really? just walks the woods. Uh, I, I did not see a bow and arrow with him, um, I, but I mean, this I, it may be within the movie world. It's the natural um, wandering grounds of the Nugent. Um, <laughs> the new, well, the Nugent. Nugent run wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that, it's like a dog whistle. Anytime you hear shitty music being played, <laughs> it head up and goes in that direction. Uh and and honestly, I didn't want to telegraph it. I didn't want uh, to color anyone else's opinion. Uh, I thought about opening this episode with an apology. <laughs> no, no, I I needed to watch this I movie. Know. That, so. I know, but I I, I heard it, like I, I just listened back to the to the doll, the episode where we go through this whole season, and Stan was so thrilled that I had picked this. He was so excited. I'm like, oh, now I feel even worse. Uh, <laughs> Mostly that it could have been uh, Stan could have picked it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one out of ten for me. Holy crap! Crazy concept. Uh, the only thing that's crazy <laughs> about the concept is that you joined all them together, and that you <laughs> actually did. And what's worse, you joined them all together, and you didn't bother really trying to pay off any of them. <laughs> uh, two, two as well. I. You... I mean, you could have called this Meatball 6, and <laughs> I wouldn't money. argue with you. I probably would have been happier. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm generally so forgiving on these things, but let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, like, like this, this is the breaking point, this category. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Everyone far, far more generous than me in this category. <laughs> Zero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero from the, oh, from the yeah. judge. So is, is this one going to get the negative one for being under 60? <laughs> this one does get a negative. In the, every season we have six secret modifiers, one of which one is the, the director handicap, which gives us a minus one. Uh, it is also a work for hire project, so it gets a minus one. Uh, it does not get any pluses. And... Boys and girls, children of all ages, we have a new bottom of the octagon movie. <laughs> 31.5 out of 100, making it the new bottom rung of the octagon. Oh, what was the previous bottom? A uh, Tale of the Mummy at 33 and American Psycho 2 at 34 and a half. Were the... Either one of those a billion times again before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, previous I... bottom and unparking the bear in the same. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely punished for having uh played um 
<clears throat> for having uh, set up the bear and then not paid that off. It it just didn't pay. <laughs> it didn't pay anything off. Like it it no. <laughs> like all my hopes were dashed by watching this movie and trying to make sense of it. And just you just you just want it to be fun, and it's never really fun. And I and what you know that to me is the worst yeah. crime that you could commit in this kind of case where where it's just like you it's fine yeah it's <laughs> yeah it's, like there's it's, so it many better movies out there that do the things that you want that we want to do and it's just like yeah this just does none of those things so that's why it scores so low it's not a good movie and it's not even like it's not a good boogaloo movie, and it's also not a good movie. It's the worst kind of movie. It's just there. Yeah, it just never gets there. It never, never commits in any direction. Uh, yeah, it doesn't <laughs> go for it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no going it, for it. And the scoring suffered for the lack of going for it. So, yep. well, hopefully, hopefully, uh, Sean Cunningham and New Kids can uh, can go for it a little bit more because. Uh, because man, I need to wash the taste of uh, State Park out of my mouth. <laughs> Jim, Jim, are you guys trying to come up with homosexual metaphors on this one? <laughs> well, that wasn't really, but but hey, you take it as you want to. <laughs> and my answer is always. I think trucky and trailer sounds like a thing. <laughs> um. <laughs> Tell the folks where to find us. All right, we did watch this movie on Tubi TV, uh, which is uh, a free place to watch these kinds of movies. Uh, Ooh, thank the, <laughs> thank the you, movie can, you can find us on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo, mm-hmm. and you can find the Octagon, our ongoing record of our search for the ultimate B movie, on WeTalkPodcasts.com, and We Talk Podcasts also has a Facebook and a Twitter. Okay, well, you know, let, let's just issue an apology overall um, and hope that this is one of those ones that maybe if you decide that you want to uh, watch it along with us, you just just maybe skip it. <laughs> yeah, usually usually that's the thing. Usually we're like, oh, you know, it's on Tubi, go ahead and watch it. And this one we're like, don't. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably, probably for the best. Yeah, you... We go to Tubi and there's tons of movies that you <laughs> yeah. have yeah. to be before you watch this one yeah, yeah watch watch some of Ravel Zelinsky's other movies yeah. that are actually yeah. like decent <laughs> all right well we've just finished butchering state park and uh, <laughs> now now uh, it's time to move into new kids uh, for the next episode as season eight simply the BS continues on the kung fu electric boogaloo so for Nick and for Jim and for Jack I am your host Eight Dan Stanadu, and thanks for listening to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo! You can't get married. You've got to shop for around. Meet Eve. Your Uncle Willie has a great ass. Meet Linny. There's a lot more to this world than just books and homework, Marsha. They're about to enter a world they never dreamed of. Way to go, gang. It's fun. It's crazy. It's wild. It's State Park. It's the wildest state of mind. I just blown up. Do the blowjob later. There's something out there. Just about anything can happen in State Park. Gee, thanks a lot, Willie. Saving me. Thousands line up to get into it. We can camp up just like the pioneers. But 
no one ever gets over it. It's the party you can't miss. Johnny's so cool. He's funny and smart and good looking. Want to dance? I have a boyfriend. And the experience you'll never forget. State Park. The place that's inhabited by the wildest creatures found in nature. Too bad I'm only allowed to exterminate insects. Rance Wells trying to dump toxic waste right here in the park? And if I can prove it, I'm gonna stop that son of a bitch. Are you worried about the competition? We eliminate the competition. <clears throat> Sorry, Dick. You're absolutely amazing, man. You ran what? At least 20 miles, right? Through woods, up hills, over rocks, and who knows what else in less than two hours. With plenty of energy left to beat the living shit out of me. Was it something I said? I hate camping. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. You starve, you get cold, you get eaten up by fuck. This sort of behavior is unacceptable. The party never stops in a park that really rocks. All this time you just wanted me for my bear suit, huh? No. I was only after the reward. State Park. Take a hike on the wild side. It'll bring out the animal in you.